Welcome to Genesis Unleashed, where we unleash the truth of Genesis. And today ask the question, how did multicellular life evolve? Okay, so we're continuing today on our Question Evolution campaign flyer, 15 questions for evolutionists, and today we're going to do question number seven. How did multicellular life originate? So just going to read out of the pamphlet here. How did cells adapted to individual survival learn to cooperate and specialize, including undergoing programmed cell death, to create complex plants and animals? And we've got a uh, article on our website that you can look into for more detail. It's creation.com slash multicellularity. And uh, if you look up that article, it'll go into detail uh, some of the, the real problems and issues here for this question. This is a big question for evolutionists. Yes, and we'll, we'll, we'll do a summary on, on the show today. Uh, we're not going to get into real, real technical things. And just right. have a look at that article and some of the others that will, uh, that will flash up on the screen as we, uh, as we get moving here. Now, so, so the, the real, to summarize then, how did cells become differentiated? You begin, evolution begins with a single cell and then you have copies of that single cell. And those single cells, all they want to do is survive. Right. Survival is the name of the game, yep. right? Um, and then you get from there and at some stage you have to get from a bunch of single cells that all do the same thing, that are all programmed to survive and, right. and survive more than the others and survival the fittest and so on, to get to a creature that has many different types of cells. That are That's cooperating. That are cooperating. With each yeah. other. Uh, yep. You know, we're basically, if you, if you look at our, our body here, each one of our cells contains the DNA for the entire genome of whatever creature you're talking about. So you, you could take a hair follicle from me and you'd have the DNA for my entire it's, body. It's all there. It's yes. all there. Or take a piece from my big toe, it's the same. You've got the complete library of information. But we're basically like a bunch of on and off switches. So the, 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 the cells in my nose know to turn on the information for my nose, but not nose, for my yeah. ear or yeah. not for my brain or, or my fingertips or whatever. So this, this huge array of complexity to, to cooperate and coordinate all of these things, that's, that's the problem we're talking about here. And, and that's why it's such a big problem for evolution. It's, it's another, in this, this, this flyer with 15 questions, this is another major issue for evolution. Right. So, somewhere along the millions of years, the story of evolution, some cells need to relinquish features that, that uh, supposedly led to their survival for millions of years. Now they need to relinquish those when they become a part of a uh, a more complex creature with cells that do different things. Right. Now we have had, of course, uh, evolutionists write in and, and try to give us some, some answers to we those. We have so. and we'll, we'll go through those as well. Answer number one, it was beneficial for cells to work together. Well, you know what? <laughs> and they, these are real answers, by the way, that have come in and we're not screening them or anything like that. These are just the answers that we've received. Well, that's not an answer. Just the, you know, the fact it was beneficial uh, for cells to work together does not explain the origin of what we're talking about here. Of course, it might be a benefit once it's in place, but that is not right. an answer to how it came to be in place. I mean, you know, it, it's wintertime in, in Canada, and, 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 and I've got my coat on, and you say, Cal, how did you get your coat? And I say, well, it's a benefit to me out in the cold to have this coat. Yeah, okay. Did I give you an answer? Your question was, Cal, where did your coat come from? Origins. That's the origin about, of it, yeah. yeah. It, it, the fact that it's a benefit and keeps me warm, that's doesn't not explain an, the origin. doesn't explain the origin. Yeah. Um, answer number two um, was colonies of cells that cooperated were the first step. Well, again, that's... Okay, <laughs> well, there, there's a huge difference between a colony of, of a whole bunch of single-celled creatures and, and a multicellular, there, there's a huge leap but right. one between the other. For example, there's a big jump between the reproductive success of a group of the cells of the same type. If all of those cells are reproducing and growing, that, that's fantastic. But uh, for a, a more complex organism, a multicellular organism, 
uh, creatures or, or if there's a cell within that organism that has great reproductive success, that's typically called cancer. You don't want that <laughs> right. in a more complex organism like a human, for example. Or, right. And, and it, yeah. it, it's almost like arguing that the, the distance between creatures, you know, if you've got a single-celled organism over here and you've got a single-celled organism over there, if they somehow are, are in close proximity to each other, that's somehow going to explain how they started cooperating and everything. E even the word cooperate implies intelligence. It does, in that person's supposed answer to this question. That's right. Uh, they cooperate. That's, um, and and as, yeah. as you pointed out, you know, yeah, in, in a multicellular organism, you get one cell that just starts replicating itself like a single cell organism was. That, that's cancer. <laughs> that's a problem, not, uh, not a solution here. Right. So, um, there, there's the whole, the whole process of some cells now need to stop doing, in, in, somewhere in the evolutionary story, need, need to stop doing what they always have done to survive. So they perhaps get the creature to a certain point and then, and then they have to, it's, it's programmed cell death, apoptosis. Right. And, uh, and, and for more details on that, that gets more technical, we're not going to do that. But read the article on apoptosis at creation.com slash apoptosis. And, and so now, program cell death. Some cells have to relinquish their existence. Their existence, <laughs> what they've always done to survive. So that the an organism can then uh, um, that's right. You know, benefit from from them. You yeah. know, they get to a certain point, they do a certain job, and then they just basically kill themselves. Um, How did that originate? Right. That's the question. Because you know, it, it's kind of like a you know a rocket. You know, you fire the rocket and it goes up, and then of course you use up that fuel, and you got outside the okay, you know, right. The, it gets and, it up and, to a certain point, and then stage two kicks in. Well. The fuel's gone, and, and that thing's a drag now. So we eject that, and we don't need that anymore. So we can continue on our mission to get to where we're going. But yeah, and living things today operate that way, right? In, in yeah, when you think about it, though, just like a rocket, that that all has to be programmed. It all has to be designed. You have to know in advance. You have to be for looking into the future to know. Okay, we need to do this now, and you know, and so on. So right. So there's a summary of that question. Uh, for all the questions, all the 15 questions, go to creation.com slash 15 questions. Have a read of those questions. Uh, try and look at the answers. There's comments that have come in. You can look at those on creation.com as well.